بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلامنا على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله الأسكياء وأصحابه الأتقياء أما بعد In a race there are two types of people There is one person who is successful in the race and then there are those people who are not successful in the race and something is similar with all types of events that take place within a specific time frame. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He says, as, as I quoted, I believe one or two days ago, or maybe even yesterday, <laughs> that, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابِ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْسَرُونَ That turn back to your Lord and submit yourself to Allah before the punishment comes. Because once the time is over, then, it's, it's, then you can't go back anymore. Allah Azza says in the Quran, أَوْ تَقُولَ حِينَ تَرَ الْعَذَابِ لَوْ أَنَّ لِي كَرَّةً فَأَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ When the person sees the punishment of the fire of hell, he will say, Oh Allah, give me the chance to go back to the world. I promise I'll be a good person. He'll see people, you know, burning and, 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 and being punished inside the fire, screaming, their skins will be burnt off and they will be replaced with new skins so that they may taste the punishment. And he will see people being punished with all sorts of punishment and people being dragged into the fire of hell. And he will say, Oh Allah, let me go back. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a principle that once time is over, you can't go back. That's just the principle of life. That once a specific time is gone, then that thing is gone past you and you can't go back to it. Some of us can't get over this. And we always think that we can go back in time. When every single thing in life has a time. When you're young, when you're very young, you have a time. That time is to play. When you become old, you have to let go of that time. You guys understand that? When you're in your youth, that's a time for you to be, you know, snobbish. That's a time for you to be a little cocky. That's a time for you to think you're it. But when you grow up, you have to let that go. What happens is that today we have adults who act like kids. You guys understand what I'm saying? We don't realize that it's time to let it go. When time is gone, you have to let it go. You know, we have men and women in our community who are very old. But subhanAllah, they dress and prepare themselves in a manner that as if they're teenagers. You know, the Urdu poet, he says something very beautiful. He said, Chahte hai ke makeup se hoor ho jaye. <laughs> he said, Chahte hai ke makeup se hoor ho jaye. Kya mumkin hai ke kishmish dwara angur ho jaye? <laughs> the translation of which is that they wish that by applying makeup they can become like the hoor of Jannah. But is it possible that a raisin can transform back into a grape again? Once that time is gone, it's gone. You can't go back to it. That's just the nature of life. Today, when we were praying our Jum'ah Salah, I'm not sure if it struck you, guys, struck you guys, but it really struck me hard. Because the Khatib said today, this Jum'ah is Jum'atul Wida'ah. This is the farewell Jum'ah. After this Jum'ah, this year's month of Ramadan is gone. So we need to make sure that we make the most of this Ramadan. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu tells us that on the Day of Judgment, every person will be standing in their place. And we will not be allowed to move until we answer certain questions. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask every person regarding their prayer. The first thing Allah will ask, tell me about your salah. Everything else we'll talk about later, first tell me about your salah. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَإِنْ أَفْلَحَ نَجَا If the person is, he's, he gave the right answer, if he's successful, he prayed the salah properly, naja, then he's good. And if the person, وَإِنْ خَابَ And if the person, he did, he did not pray his salah properly, Khasira, that person is now, he's at loss. Now what comes ahead will be very difficult for him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also tells us that Allah Azza wa Jalla will ask, what did you do with your life? Did you make anything out of it? Did you bring anything? What did you bring for me? If we go to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and show Allah that, oh Allah, I violated every single thing you told me to do, but Alhamdulillah, I have a nice house. I bought it on interest. That's my promise to you. I violated all the laws of yours, but I bought a house for you. I have a very nice car, but that was also an interest as well. No problem, inshallah. I, you know, everything. I, have a, I, I did so much for the people, but I missed my salah while doing it. You guys, it's an oxymoron. 
Allah Azza says in the Quran, which they recited it in Surah Ma'arij, that the, the mujrim, the criminal, he will desire to ransom himself in return of all of his wealth. But that will have no meaning to Allah because wealth, what does wealth mean to Allah Azza wa Jal? Allah Azza wa is the creator of wealth. How are you going to fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your wealth? Maybe it means something to you and I, but not to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means nothing at all. So what we learn is that we need to make the most of our time. Now another, in that very same hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa where he says, Allah will ask us regarding our lives, what did you do with your life? That hadith also says very specifically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then ask you regarding your youth. Your youth. Your youth is a part of your life. But it's such an important part of your life that Allah will say that as a specific question, a very unique question. That tell me about your youth. What did you do inside your youth? Because the youth is a time when you're energetic, where you're healthy, where you can change the world. These brothers from Ma'roof, when I was looking at their faces, I was thinking, subhanAllah, these are young people. They're not even old. And they're so young, mashallah, and they're using their energy. This is the time when you're supposed to use your energy, when you're young. When you become old, then everyone comes back to the masjid. That's just the nature. When the white hair starts coming out, then everyone starts coming to the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to come back to the masjid at some point in our lives, inshallah. But we have to make the most of our youth. right? We have to make the most of our time. While we have it, we have to make the most of it. Now the thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an that time is something so valuable that most people are at loss when it comes to time. Is that true or false? True. Right? And this is a surah of the Qur'an. Allah azza wa jal says, asr." He takes an oath by time. Inna al-insan fi khusr. Most people are in loss when it comes to, to, to managing their time. Illa alladheena amanu. Except for those who believe in Allah. Wa amilu salihat And they do? Good deeds. Wa tawasaw bil haq. They encourage one another for the truth. Wa tawasaw bil sabr. And they encourage one another to be patient. So we can't lose out in time. Ramadan is coming to an end. We need to believe in the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to continue to do good. But when you believe in Allah and you do good, at some point if you're alone in the journey, you get lazy and you get tired. That's when the community effort comes in. You have to call each other. If you see the brother next to you, you know, he's slacking a little on taraweeh prayer, you need to say, brother, you did it for so long, you can do it now as well. You have to be strong. Come on, let's do it. Be patient. Don't give up. You know, someone today, he asked me this question. I was, on, I was speaking on a radio show. And the brother on the, on the other side, the, the host of the radio show, he asked him this question. He said, why is it that Muslims are so energetic inside Ramadan, but have no energy outside Ramadan? Good question. I said, it's very simple. The reason why it's so simple is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this ummah by telling us to fast in the month of Ramadan. Had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that you can fast any 30 days of the year. Someone would fast in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, would it be the same thing? No. Yes or no? no? Absolutely not. But when we do our amal, when we do our good deeds together as a group, that's when there's fun. That's why Allah Azza wa says, وَتَوَاصَوْ Do it together, not alone. يَدُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْجَمَاعَ Come to the masjid and pray in jama'ah. Allah's help is with a group. وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقْ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ So as I was mentioning, our month of Ramadan is coming to an end. We have to learn to manage the very few moments we have left of this Ramadan. This is make it or break it. You can run the race and be in the lead of the race for the entire race. But in the last few yards, if you pulled your foot back and lie down for a nap, it's not going to work. You're not going to win the race. You have to push right till the end. You can start the fight off very good and get a whole lot of points in the first round. But if you don't fight till the end, you will be knocked out. This is the month of Ramadan. We've come very far. And sometimes you could be lazy at the first part of the fight, but then pick your game up at the end of it and knock the guy out. Yes or no? Is that true or not? That's what the Prophet ﷺ says in a very beautiful tradition. bil. That's the famous tradition. Bin niyat is the famous one. Another very, another very, very beautiful tradition of the Prophet ﷺ, he said, bil khawatim. That actions will be judged based off their ending. That's why the Prophet says in another hadith, whoever says La ilaha illallah before dying, he will go to? Because his ending was so good, Allah will overlook everything from the beginning. You guys understand that? إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ Now this is the time to finish off our Ramadan solid, positive, strong and firm inshaAllah. Okay? Now, what I wanted to talk about today, and I, just, just a little bit, we'll, we'll end it very soon inshaAllah, 
is that we should make sure that we manage whatever time we have remaining of the month of Ramadan carefully. Now, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says mankind is at loss when it comes to time. The reason is because we don't manage it properly. If we know how to manage our time, we can do a lot. As Muslims, we are very lucky because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a role model who was a master in time management. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was a master. You know, even the non-Muslims, they say that what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, achieved as a prophet in 23 years, no person in history had done something like that. If I was to give you a, a team of five basketball players and say within 23 years, take these guys to the top of the NBA and bring the championship home, what are the chances you can do that? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't playing basketball, by the way. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to a group of people who initially didn't only dislike him, they hated him. But within just a few years, the Prophet Sallallahu kept working, kept working. And now in Hajjatul Wada, according to some narrations, he had over 100,000 Sahaba. 100,000. And think about this. 100,000 Sahaba. Did he have a YouTube channel? Flyers? Facebook page? Twitter? Mass media? Mass marketing? Social media? Yes or no? no. None of that. You know, his adhan was called from the top of a, a hill and whoever can hear the voice, that was it. There was no artificial da'wah involved here. And I'm not saying that you know, all that da'wah is artificial, meaning it's negative, but it's all man-made. It's not, it's not natural. He used his natural means that Allah gave him and he worked so sincerely that, and he was worked so effectively that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to achieve so much. If we were to compare just one night of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listen very carefully. If we were to compare just one night of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I swear by Allah, our entire lives can never match one night of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you guys agree to that? Yes, that's Very true. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sincere. He knew how to manage his time, every second of it. He used it very carefully. Now, a few points that I want to mention. How do we manage our time? In order to manage our time effectively, you have to take a step back. So before you start telling me I'm going to do this at 3 o'clock, do this at 2 o'clock, do this at 5 o'clock, we need to step back. What we need to do, you can only be effective in managing your time if you can first of all prioritize your goals. Based off what your priorities are in life, you can manage your time. Someone's priority may be, I want to be a healthy person. Now for that person, they will prioritize their, they will manage their time in a, in a similar manner. I will eat at this time, I will not eat, I will not eat at this time, I'm going to work out at this time, I'm going to sleep at this time. They will base their entire day, manage their entire time based off their priority, which is to be healthy. Some person's priority may be that I wish to be very wealthy. That means now they will manage their entire day to make sure that it brings out the fruit of wealth out of the time they have. Are you guys following what I'm saying? So as Muslims, what do we need to bring out of our day? This is the big question. What do we need to bring out of our day? Okay. Shah Waliullah Muhadith the Hedwi Rahmatullahi Ali, he said something very beautiful. He said every Muslim should be able to contribute on four levels. How many levels? Four. Very jami on mani, very precise and concise. He says that every Muslim should be able to contribute on four levels. The first thing, we should all contribute to ourselves. Ya ladina amanu qu and fusakum. Save yourself from the fire of hell first. First, make sure you contribute to yourself, meaning establish your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the first thing the Prophet sallallahu did when he woke up in the morning. Before he went on Facebook or Twitter and updated it like we would do. They didn't have it then obviously, I'm just giving an example. The first thing the Prophet sallallahu does is he spends hours and hours praying the Hajjud Salah. He's establishing his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. And the last thing, again, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ Remember that narration? The last thing he does before he goes to sleep, he's reading Surah Mulk, Surah Waqiyah, Surah Alif Lamim Sajda. He's reading, uh, what do you call this? The Mu'awwadatayn. He's reading all these different surahs and all these different tasbihat. Again, establishing his connection with Allah. That's where it starts, that's where it ends. The most important thing is to make sure you can sort yourself out first. The second thing Shah Waliullah says, every Muslim should be able to contribute on four levels. First to yourself, the second to your family. You need to make sure you take care of your family. If you are doing all the da'wah work in the, that could be done from a person, but you're neglecting your family, are you doing right or wrong? wrong? It's wrong. You can use whatever justification you want, but the reality of the matter is that it's wrong. Because the Sahaba described the Prophet wasallam as the one who was best to his, who was family, his family. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anh was very particular on this. If he saw someone was too excited in the deen and gone from his wife for too long, he would send him back home. Time for you to go back home, brother. He'd say, I want to give my life for the sake of Allah. Umar said, Allah will give you that chance if it's written for you, go back to your home first. 
So the second thing is contributing to your family. The Prophet ﷺ gave a significant time of his day also to his family, also to his wife and kids. You know, many Sahaba, they mentioned after Fajr Salah was over, when the Prophet ﷺ would come home after praying the Salat al-Duha, he would spend that morning, the morning hours with his wives and spend it whoever's day it was. And he would also spend the after Asr Salah time, the Prophet ﷺ would go and visit every one of his wives. Are you guys following there? The balance. Okay. The third level, Shah Waliullah mentions that every person should try to contribute on is a community level then. So not ending with, now many people what happens is that they contribute to their wives and children and then what happens? Ghaibun. <laughs> he's missing. Wallahu alam where he's gone. Maybe, you know, Yajuj and Majuj kidnapped him. No one sees him anymore. He's gone missing. So some people they get involved with their family and after that you don't see them anymore. Well that shouldn't be it either. After in being involved with your family, then you should have a contribution to your, your community where you're being involved with people. Like, you know, like you're going and feeding the poor and the needy, you're helping people out, you're doing whatever you can, you're involved with the community. And the last thing Shah Waliullah mentions is that you shouldn't end with your community. There should be another layer of your day that you should contribute every single day, a little part. And what is that? Some sort of alami fikr. Alami fikr means an international global concern that I want to do something for someone outside my community for humanity, inshaAllah. That could be a dua, that could be a sadaqah, that could be you going out every so often and doing something outside your community. So if we can somehow prioritize our day and bring these things inside, obviously along with our education, along with our schooling, along with our work, these are all obviously uh, oblig obligations that we fulfill. Hopefully by now, and if we don't, we need to you know, fulfill those obligations as well. So if we can become effective with our time in the month of Ramadan, then we have hope that we will be able to be effective outside Ramadan. But we have to first start now. Okay? Two things I'm going to mention and I'm going to end. The first thing, whenever you do decide to set up a schedule to manage your time, be practical. You guys understand that? Don't overcommit. So if you know that I need to give some time every day to my Qur'an, don't say, I'm going to read the Qur'an every day, the whole Qur'an from beginning to end. Because you might be able to do it once or twice, but then you won't be able to do it. Be practical. No, what can I do? That's not lowballing it, but it's realistic. Not like read one letter a day, that's lowballing yourself, or reading one ayah a day, that's lowballing. We all know that we can all read more than one ayah, one letter a day. Yes or no? So give yourself a realistic goal that every day I'm going to try to read one page, inshallah. And once you start it, be firm on it. The Prophet Wasallam teaches us a very beautiful principle in, uh, in, 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 uh, in terms of our time management. He says, أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ أَدْوَ مُهَاوَ إِنْ قَلْ The most beautiful action, the most beloved action to Allah is the one that is little, but it's, it's consistent. And the second point that I want to mention that's very important in order for you to be successful in managing your time properly, and in particular in whatever time we have left from the month of Ramadan, learn to delete distractions from yourself. Your Facebook, your Twitter, your YouTube, your Gmail, your phone, your TV, your newspaper, your magazine, your friends. I'm not saying go into a cave and go and live there, but learn to limit your distractions. Learn and ask yourself, how beneficial is it for me right now to be engaged in these things? Okay, And how much should I stay away from them? If you can cut out unnecessarily thing, unnecessary things from your day, automatically now you'll have more time to do things that are are useful and necessary. You guys understanding that? One of, our very, one of my very good friends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I give him a long life. I know him from Chicago. I don't know, Oman also knows him very well. SubhanAllah, he utilized his time on traveling to and from work. You know how people in Chicago in particular, they sit in the CTA for an hour there, hour back. So rather than sitting and browsing the phone or just drowsy and sleeping or you know, watching some, something on the phone or just you know, uh, reading some novel, he utilized that time and he used to read the Quran. And subhanAllah, he memorized the entire Qur'an on the way and two from work. You, got, you know what I'm talking about, Qaisa? Mufti Abrar. Mufti Abrar Mirza. He learned the Qur'an, memorized the Qur'an on the way to and from work. He utilized his time. You guys can do this as well. There are people who, can, who have done this and you guys can do it as well. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all the tawfiq and ability to maximize on our time and to make the most of it. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from those who are successful in this world and successful from the month of Ramadan. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiru kanatubu ilaik. Akhru da'wana, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.